Good morning, pregame crew. It is Monday, November 22nd, 824 a.m. Eastern, 624 Mountain Time. It is officially Turkey Week. Welcome. This is a holiday week. We have off Thursday and half day Friday. Futures will trade for a partial day on Thursday, however. Thank you, Chuck. I appreciate it. Hi, Night Truck. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, <laughs> Night Truck. Hi, Wabinka. Hi, Don. Hey, Keggers. We're so glad to have you, Mustang. I saw when your name came through. I got so excited. Hey, Jason. Hey, La. Emad. Jared. What's up? <laughs> That's awesome, Brian. It's kind of funny. You were spot on with Chad Glory two weeks ago. That one time, remember, back in band camp when you were right, Lori? Hi, Brett. Hey, Tammy. John. Jorge. How are y'all? Whatever your normal energy is on a normal trading day, dial it back. It's holiday week, and I can already tell from pre-market news it's going to be a slow week. We're going to have pockets of greatness either to the upside or downside, and it's, we have to find them and do our little treasure hunt that we do every morning, but I can't protect you from this low, volatil low volume, low volatility environment. You're gonna have to keep your hand on your wallet this week and only open it if it is A++ setups. Hey, Blue Dog, Eric, Train Man, Jordan, Topher, what an interesting group of people. I'm just so intrigued by the different types of people, backgrounds, locations. It's just really cool. And I get to hang out with y'all. That's really cool. So I will take a request. Hey, Jessica, I will take a chart request right here, right now. Before I officially get started in four minutes. And here is my agenda so you can look at it for yourself. We don't have a lot of names because I'm not going to force it and I don't want you forcing it. So we'll go over the indices, crypto commodities, movers and shakers of the day. If you're interested in my chart setup, it's on the screen now. Hey, Ronnie Tilray, let's do it. <laughs> Two of y'all asked for Tilray. Let me look at Tilray real quick because it had some decent volume this morning for, for a holiday week. It was in our top 50. And of course, I'm having a little problem. One second. One second. Think or swim is not cooperating. It was a couple hundred thousand, if I'm remembering correctly, Tilray and pre-market volume. So it had a little bit of volume. It was worth, it was enough to, worth noting. So let's look at the hourly. That doesn't give me a lot of clarity on the four hour, maybe the uh, two hour. Yeah, we got a two hour EQ. Don't force anything on these marijuana names. In a low volume environment, we have a double bottom at 1070. That makes it super clear, meaning that you, me, brother, sister, Nancy, Sally, Susie, Johnny should be, it's a clear signal to go in at 1070, in my opinion, and then stop out if 1068 is lost because you have clearly defined risk and reward. So these may not be your bread and butter setups in the future. You'll define as you trade, you'll start honing in on what your edge is and what your system is. Oversold bounces, double bottoms, triple bottoms may never be your thing in the future. But if you're having a problem with losses, I suggest finding those higher risk reward setups. Here, the risk is pretty low, 1070. If price were to return to that area, you could stop out of 1070 or just give it a couple pennies wiggle room. And that is clearly defining your risk. You will get stopped out of these setups more because the probability is lower because it's not a trend trade. However, when you do catch a winner, you need to let it ride to offset that those higher higher percentage stopouts. But it still can end up yielding nice rewards. It's a Monday. Can y'all feel it? I can feel it. It's a Monday all over. All right. So. Did I give y'all enough on Tilray? Resistance, 
1135, 1177, and that key support 1070. And below 1070 is 1016, and that's a tweezer bottom. Y'all see that? I mean, it's not ideal. Typically with a tweezer bottom, you're gonna wanna see a larger wick here. You want a long lower wick of bulls buying the dip, but I would say that's adequate. And of course, it's just a super clear daily double bottom. So that's Tilray. Good morning. Uh, I'll give, yes, Robert. So Robert's asking, are you still bullish on Google after the bigger pullback? So Google, we talked about it how many days last week, this potential head and shoulders, how it looked like a faux head and shoulders to me. There is nothing bearish about new all-time highs. Nothing. Let me change my pen. Nothing bearish about new all-time highs. We hit a new all-time high on Friday. Now, let's go shorter-term time frames and define our plan. So yes, Google gave a lot back on Friday. So on a bounce, we're looking for a lower high. However, I would still expect a daily higher low compared to 29.44.80. We have enough room for a daily higher low. So we will see what happens with Google. Just keep repeating to yourself, there's nothing bearish about all-time highs. Yes, they pull back too much, so now on a bounce, bears will be looking to scalp a lower high. Very similar to Amazon and Facebook. Look at Amazon. Amazon tested all-time highs and rejected on Friday by $11. It, what a beautiful move. We have a squeeze. We held the 50 RSI, elevated bull volume. The last four weeks, we just need to get really good at identifying strong charts on higher time frames that may need a breather in the shorter term. And it looks like a lot of charts need breathers in the shorter term. And we have a potential Fed announcement today. Mars, yes. This, this had more news. This, oh, it wasn't big, I don't think. They, they may have had a downgrade and then they said they're not going to have a mandatory vaccination at this time. They're still deciding. Disney's been super beat up. 153.41 was that key Mars level from over here, and we hit 152.77. It looks bad. Now, if this is your jam and you love oversold bounces and your system supports oversold bounces, then let her rip, tater chip, have fun. It could be a potential hourly inverse head and shoulders. If you routinely get stopped out of oversold bounces because you enter so early and start averaging down, stay away from it. I don't like it. Oh, my goodness. It's 6, 832. Let's get started. I'm Chark Gal Lori. I'm part of the Chark Guys community. We teach technical analysis. We have a community of a thousand plus of my closest friends, and this is what we do in our community. Here's what the membership features are. Daily live video coverage of the markets. That's three times in the room only for members. Real-time Q&A a couple times a week. 24-7 trading community, technical analysis on demand, meaning if you say, what is the key level on Amazon, key resistance, key support, what do you think about an entry or high or low? We give you our technical analysis opinions. Whiteboard key levels and target. And I realize this is something I've never covered, which is a total shame. So this is what our whiteboard looks like. So we have a channel just dedicated to the whiteboard and our charting man or charting gal for the day, the chart guy or gal, they create the whiteboard. Dan usually does it three times a week, if not four times a week. He, we go over the economic calendar, commodities, key levels, and then major players, SPY. What's going on with SPY? IWM, QQQ, key levels, hourly lower highs, four hour higher lows. What are we looking for? Facebook, NVIDIA, Netflix, Apple, Google, Tesla, BA, NEO. Then we go uh, XLF, the miners, biotech, crypto, VIX, and then the marijuana sector, all the key levels. And this is given every single day to members. This is probably one of the most undervalued perks of being a member of the chart guys. So for today, of course, it's Black Friday special. Y'all will probably remember this from Friday, we have a small change. 
So this code doesn't work anymore. We had tons of people asking for a code because they didn't get in on the activations. Annual membership $7.99 with a hoodie, a mouse pad, TCG back burner indicator for trading view only and trading strategy webinar. So here's your code. This is like, what is that, Jeff Foxworthy? Here's your sign. Here's your code, Black Friday 22. Black Friday 22, it is good for three activations, and that is for our pre-gamers only. And there is one more thing I wanted to show you that has to do with this week's seasonality. Oh, I'm Charcal Lori on Twitter. One more thing. If history is a guide, this is how the typical trading week unfolds for Thanksgiving week. If his, the entire week of Thanksgiving has averaged a 60 basis points or 0.60 percentage point, which is very negligible, advance for the S&P 500 with the best returns on Wednesday and Friday, and the only decline typically is on Monday. I've told y'all the um, experienced guys take a break over the holidays and they leave the young guys in charge, and that's typically a little bit more bullish because they, they're more comfortable trading bullish. This is data that goes back to 1945. The gains have swung to Mondays and Thanksgiving week with small declines on Tuesday and then rally into the end of the week. It's also typically characterized by some of the lowest trading volumes, which means low volatility. And then today, here's the kicker. So I was expecting low volatility until we got the news today. President Biden is expected to announce, announce his pick for Fed chair. And it was supposed to be in the coming days. Well, now it's today. So if he were to nominate Brainard, or is it Brainard or Brainard, it wouldn't be a surprise to me to see some near-term volatility. All right. Pre-game black 22. Yes, that's the code. ES four hours. So I guess it's okay that I'm getting started a little late and muddling through some of these housekeeping items because we don't have a ton of names, but I think I have some clear direction to give you for the day or I shouldn't say direction, a map. If this, then that. I think we have a good map. So on the weekly, we hit a new all-time high last week. So, I'm sorry, we did not hit it last week. We hit it the prior week. We had an inside bar last week, my bad. On NASDAQ, we hit a new all-time high. And again, say it with me, there's nothing bearish about all-time highs. So on ES, this could still be a weekly bull flag. And I know that it is very surprising to say this. And again, if you're interested in my chart setup, it's on the screen. I'm going to delete it now. Let me move this. So the eight EMA is down at 46.16 for ES, meaning we could come back to the eight EMA and still to 4,616, 4,616, and still be healthy. Weekly high or low is down at 4260. We could come to the 4500 area and it, at that point would simply be a mean reversion. Of course, on a bounce, we'd be looking for a lower high. So on a pullback, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. We're not expecting everything to just come crashing down. At this point, bulls have done check, check, check. They've given themselves enough room on so many time frames that they can go sit on the bench, drink some water, wipe their brow while the bears take over temporarily and the bears would have to bring, I mean, crazy volume to pull this down. So what I'm looking at is this potential head and, head and shoulders on the four hour, but y'all know I like to call it a faux head and shoulders when we potentially have a weekly bull, a bull flag on a higher time frame, which in this case is weekly. So the hourly resistance is 4716, 4723. Support. 4695 and 4690. This Fed announcement is absolutely the, the fly in the ointment for the bears and the bulls this week. If they thought they had some clear technical direction, this isn't coming out of left field. We knew it was coming soon, but the fact that it's happening today, we could possibly react bearishly. So now we've got a huge variable out there in the market. So here are your levels. So it looked like a rising wedge, of course, on uh, NASDAQ, on RTY, on YM. It wasn't super clear, but of course, this is not a rising wedge. But when we see those higher highs wick out and bears sell into it, once we trigger these stops and then the bears pile back in, that is not a good sign. Let me show you what I'm talking about on NASDAQ. You see how this is 
much more in indicative. Is that the right word? But definitely looks like a potential rising wedge. But we hit a new all-time high overnight. It looks like NASDAQ could carry us again this week. I have to jump to Apple while I talk about the NASDAQ. There's no way I can talk about one without the other. Look at this parabolic action. That is more than 45 degrees. We talk about Sotima, slope of the EMA, telling us how fast the bulls or bears are driving the bus. Look at how fast. So the steeper that slope, what is it? Like 55 degrees that they're driving 55, 60 miles per hour. That's fast. And you're getting that separation and that opening of the EMAs on elevated volume with a daily squeeze. Now, I'm going to go ahead and finish talking about Apple right now. So look at what I have pulled up. I am taking it super easy. I'm not forcing anything. I don't hate my money. I'm not forcing anything this week. So Apple, Tesla, and TSM, these are the three individual names I'm looking at. As always, my normal sectors, and I'm watching Nat Gas. That's it. That's all I'm watching. I am taking it slow today, but there's no way I can take Apple off my screen with that move on Friday. Now, Odds would favor that we could take some, have some consolidation today. It'd be a perfect day for consolidation. But at this point, bulls are just expecting healthy consolidation. I would think something along the lines of a bull flag. Now, that's if the new Fed chair doesn't throw us into a tailspin. With this type extension, we've created a clear pull on the daily and on the four-hour time frame. That is a bull flag pull, which is step one. And then step two is get that healthy consolidation that's not too deep where it goes into equilibrium territory. We want to stay about a third of the size of this pull. Now, we could keep going up today and continue forming the pull, or is today where we form the flag? We're at 83 RSI on the four hour, but we are in all-time high territory. We are all-time high, so RSI doesn't matter as much. So. You say, Lori, you have to tell me right now, what is your highest probability scenario for Apple today? It would be a healthy pullback because it's buddy. Amazon, and I still haven't gone over, I recognize Russell or the Dow, but I can't talk about uh, NQ without going over Apple and Amazon. So Amazon could be a daily bull flag. We don't want these upper wicks of profit taking and it definitely gave back way too much for bulls on Friday. So now we're looking for a lower high. So if Apple's getting a lower high, excuse me, Amazon's getting a lower high, Facebook is getting a lower high, then what would that possibly mean for Apple? Healthy consolidation would be welcome today. So I hope that makes sense on our overall NQ view. NQ was carrying us overnight. We do have that four hour rising wedge. So things look a little precarious for bulls in the short term. So just be careful. Your position size, by the way, not only should be, you be trading less, I will be sizing down because we have things, some of the, our variables are off this week as far as volume, and I'm not gonna get caught in that crap. So I'm sizing down. Potential US 10-year rising wedge, which would be awesome for NASDAQ bulls because we need this 10 year to roll over. We need it to roll over so it can be that tailwind for the tech bulls. The US 10 year, the bonds are the, if they're going up, that is the worst for the technology sector. The worst, yes. Okay, um, RTY, again, rising wedge. Looks like we're attempting to break bear from this rising wedge, if my trend lines are right. And y'all know I don't like trend lines, but I can see in this psychology, if you just, Say, okay, there's no rising wedge. I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't believe in rising wedges. Okay, four hour lower high, I do believe in. Odds favor a four hour lower high compared to 23.77. We're running into the underside of a down trending 21 EMA on RTY. So see what the bulls got. They had a rough, R-U-F-F, -F, rough week last week. They had this big breakout from this gorgeous chart and they gave up so much, T terribly unfortunate. Unfortunate. So we ended the week with a weekly inside bar, low 23.41, resistance 23.66. On any bounce, odds would favor a lower high on the daily. YM, YM, they didn't give up as much as RTY. 
We do have the squeeze on the weekly to be aware of. We are holding 50 RSI. This looks healthy. Besides this little bump in bear volume, this looks like healthy consolidation. On the hourly, it was getting that rising wedge look. Resistance 35737, 35762s support. 35516, 35486. We do not know what time the news is. It's just whenever they decide to say it. Bitcoin pop. Awesome. Okay, so Bitcoin decided to just break through all my lines, which I'm okay with because I bought that dip. This is some notable volume. Wow. Congrats, Bitcoin bulls that bought the dip. So here's your resistance. How many times do I show y'all this? On Ethereum, on crypto and commodities. Crypto and commodities, they're the worst. Go break that support, stop everybody out, and then reverse it. Look at that. So we're looking at Bitcoin Coinbase, and I just want you to think about the logic behind this. This is ideal for Coinbase, isn't it? Let's go stop everyone out. Let's cha-ching, collect all those fees. And then the bears who want to re-enter, they're incurring fees. So they get people on fees left and right by these tiny breaks in resistance and tiny breaks in support. Collect fees and reverse it. Just think about that. And I'm not a, a conspiracy theorist like whatever. This is just business. So just always look for that with uh, the crypto and commodities. We did, however, hold Ethereum support by $3. Wow, what a bottom fish opportunity. Your next resistance, 4393-4427. Okay, mental note. That's pretty impressive for Bitcoin. What do we do when we see bullishness in either the market or Bitcoin? We go look at their at the market or, you know, could Bitcoin be a, a bellwether or a canary for the market? Right now, it doesn't look stellar, but this doesn't look bad either. This is a nice bounce. This could be early makings of a 10 minute inverse head and shoulders or five minute whichever one floats your boat okay gold i had to leave this drawing on here because it was the drawing itself is super ugly but we nailed this 12 hour diamond pattern on gold look out look at that so that's when you get these tiny higher highs you flex down you break so it's not a head and shoulders you're just getting some real sharp movement and it's almost like it's a broadening formation so over here it starts out looking like a broadening formation and then the, the bulls can't even go make tiny higher highs without follow through and that's when it changes from a potential broadening formation to a diamond bearish reversal pattern and we broke bear out of that on gold so hopefully last week's analysis on thursday and friday with gold helped you stay out of trouble with gold you have support down at 1823 this temporary low may be in at 1835 so let's see what the bulls can do with this now that we got some healthy pullback on the weekly no matter what we're looking for a weekly high or low on gold and we're approaching four hour oversold so four hour oversold may be a good entry in gold let me just set my alert not that i necessarily want to enter long but i want to evaluate it at that point this just gives me opportunity to look at things okay oil oil potential four hour bear flag got some news that i think korea maybe is opening their reserves on oil everybody's talking about trying to get this price down some of the variables are outside of the politicians control resistance 7670 7750 support 7526 7476 we are looking for a weekly high or low where she stops nobody knows four hour got oversold back here and we bounce so now a four hour oversold doesn't mean as much now even though we are looking for a weekly high or low slightly elevated bull volume but nothing compared to this again a potential four hour bearish flag you're welcome Sher sharif all right yeah hit the like button why don't you Okay, nat gas. So what I'm looking for in nat gas is I am looking to nail the monthly higher low. Will I? Who knows? I, again, it's a higher risk scenario, me attempting to nail this uh, monthly higher low. 
My stop out is below 470. I added this morning with Nat Gas, 4713 is that key support. And I have my stop at the 470 area. Resistance is 515. Uh, okay, so oil will be at 1030 Eastern Wednesday, normal time, Nat Gas, I believe. And Joey looked it up for me, uh, noon on Wednesday. So Nat Gas is inventory is normally on Thursday. It is moved to Wednesday. Apple, I went over and I gushed about all the love for Apple. So I like Apple for a potential consolidation day. And then Wednesday, it may be a fun lotto on Wednesday, which of course, typically our lottos are on Friday. Friday will be a very difficult day to, to play lottos because we will only have a half day for the trade to develop. Facebook, we're looking for that hourly low or high. This is Dan's words. I, I try always to give credit where credit's due. If I see someone else post a setup that I like and I bring it to you, I promise I always try to give credit. This is Dan's setup and I really like this one for a potential lower high top fish. Let me see where we could. Is there any lower time frame levels? So I guess 350 and 351.96. So 350 area. So what you do is you say, okay, what's my setup? Let's go over the setup. There's two different things. Let me talk to y'all about what's in a trade. Dan will be live in the room in 10 minutes, in 10 minutes. Okay, so we have two parts to a trade. Setup and trigger system. So the setup could be, it's like playing golf. The setup is I want to land it on up there beyond the water. It's about 150 yards and I want to use my whatever seven iron. I don't know which one goes with which. My husband just tells me which number. But 150 yards, it's a layup and I'm going to use my seven iron. That's the setup. What's the system, the trigger you're going to use to set up? You're going to swing. Uh, you're going to swing. You're going to keep your legs angled to the hole. That's actually the process of you swinging. So the setup on Facebook is an hourly lower high is what we're scouting. What system are we going to use to to nail that? It could be a five minute. Let me use. I can use the brush. We're looking for a five minute higher high, higher low, lower high. Break that higher low. You could put your stop at the lower high or at the higher high. Either one. Or you could stop out half on the lower high break and the other half on the higher high break. So the setup is we're scouting a Facebook hourly lower high. That doesn't mean we just carte blanche enter. We're looking for price action. Carte blanche. Yeah, Y'all, my vocabulary, we're just, I'm just on the struggle bus. So that doesn't mean we just say, oh, we're entering. Okay, so what are our levels? 350, 350, and then 351, 46. That's our levels. And we're waiting for price action to confirm weakness with potentially elevated bear volume, and then we got our top fish in. So that will probably be my best explanation on how to take a trade I've done in a while. I'm not saying I did a great job, I'm just saying I, it's more, it's clear to me and I feel like I articulated a little bit better. LCID, LCID had some, so Tesla and NEO look bullish this morning, LCID and Rivion look slightly bearish, had huge, huge volume this morning. So it's already pulling back. What I wanted is a trade like this. Lower high, higher low. I was hoping to top fish, though that could still happen around 54.70. Top fish, LCID for a potential short. Be careful, the bulls can get hungry on this. LRCX, this is gonna be a weird one because I love this weekly chart. I love it. But how we ended with the upper wick of profit taking, we're looking for that hourly lower high, and then I would look to bottom fish a higher low on the daily. So let me show you what that means. So on the hourly, this is what I'm looking for. On a bounce, I would like to top fish 657. So I'd look for a short in this area. A pull back to 643 and hold, that would be an interesting area to potentially get long or even down here at 625 for this weekly chart. So I have a short-term time frame trade in mind, the hourly lower high. That's the short-term time frame. And then long-term time frame, I'm looking for a daily 
higher low for a swing entry. I hope that makes sense. So I have to map this out in my head. What's the most likely scenario on shorter term time frame? What is the most likely uh, scenario on a higher time frame? Tesla, I told y'all, told y'all over and over and over last week, and I know we were probably all on the same page, that this minor, minor pullback on this major Elon news of him selling so many shares and those institutions or whomever, it had to be institutions we're talking millions and billions of millions of shares and billions of dollars worth for them to absorb that dump of shares and still go sideways for the most part and then finish so strong Friday. Super, super impressive. We're holding that daily 50 RSI. So that's pretty important to me and we are pretty bullish this morning. Uh, Musk says the, tw- the Model S Plaid is coming to China around March. So 1173 is your resistance. I would love to buy a pullback. So my setup is I'm looking to get in Tesla long and ride this potential hourly bull flag. My trigger is I'm waiting for a potential pullback and I would love a high of low bar setup or a two minute high or low bottom fish tsm this chart looks so similar to lrcx that i wouldn't trade both of them they're pretty similar oh wait let me go back to the weekly look at that squeeze that's a butte holding 50 rsi so now what i want on tsm if i wanted to swing it which i'd like to i would look for a pull back to buy so on the hourly come on trading view you can do it Same thing. So y'all see why NASDAQ, I'm looking for a pullback this morning. We have lower high setups on TSM, on LRCX, on Facebook, on Amazon, on QQQQQ, QQQ, just three of them. So TSM, that weekly chart and that weekly squeeze is beautiful. But right here in the short term, I'm looking for some consolidation. Then I want to buy some of that consolidation. It may take a couple days to play out. Coin, coin has a daily equilibrium on watch, 320 key support. So on the daily, our resistance is at 348.49, then 355.20 support, 323.41 and 320. We have a squeeze on this sucker. We're holding 50 RSI. I have a bullish lean on this chart in the short term. Just in time for TradingView to start locking up on me. Okay, you don't like the Facebook top fish. That is awesome because you know what? We are a-okay as far as it's okay. No, You don't have to agree with me. So what I'm looking at is we hit the 0.618 retracement on Friday and we had a lot of pre-market volume. So I'm counting this low here because we had a lot of pre-market volume. Look at that green volume candle right there. We popped out of it and we pulled back almost 62 60%. So that's huge. That's not a bull flag. So if I'm looking at the hourly time frame cuz I'm telling you I'm just looking short term for a lower high pullback and then I'm looking bullish Nasdaq mid to end of week. I'm just looking bearish, slightly bearish today and tomorrow especially with the FOMC news overhang. You're making bank on that. Uh, is that what it is, Ronnie? Because I upgraded my system again for on TradingView. They have a Black Friday special to be aware of. Okay, one more time. I want to be sure to say this. All right, so the pregame Black Friday special today, the code is Black Friday 22. Black Friday 22. Only three activations for annual membership. You get $100 off TCG hoodie, mouse pad, TCG back burner for trading view and trading strategy webinar. Oh, you're welcome. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to go listen to Charting Man Dan. Thank you for joining me. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter. Go get you that Black Friday special. As always, let us know if you need something at support at chartguys.com. And y'all are the best. You stop losses.